While there are ways to route and hide the wire for your dash cam, some of them involve removing panels off or cutting wires, and I didn't really want to do any of that. Also, I do love the idea of having the camera hardwire, that peace of mind and that professional look, but again, I didn't really want to tamper with my car, so I found that there are two ways of doing it which are fairly easy. One of them will be to tap into the fuse box by swapping out an original fuse and putting in a new fuse that has a little wire or a lead coming out of it that gives you power. The other way that's even easier is using an OBD connector power adapter. That OBD connector plugs straight into your OBD port and then you'll have a cable that runs from that OBD port to your camera and that would pull power without having to cut any wires and is fully reversible. Let me show you how I routed my power connector. So as you can see, I have used a suction mount to mount the camera on the bottom on the driver's side. I also placed it as far as I could to this corner to keep the cable close to the A-pillar. Then I fed the cable in between the A-pillar and the dash, and by shoving it in between that little gap, it makes the cable almost disappear, making that professional appearance look. Then the cable runs and comes down this pad right here. This is not visible when the door is closed, and from here it goes to the power OBD connector. The advantage of placing the camera low in the dash is avoiding running cable up the A-pillar to the top of the windshield, and you still get that hardwired look by hiding the cable into the dash. While not necessary, you can use flat black tape to further conceal and secure the cable. This is the key to making this installation super easy and fast. This is the OBD2 power connector, and as you can see the wire has a lot of excess which I secure in the bottom, and then it travels off the panel that I showed you earlier. The connector fits in very nice and snug, and it has a little switch on here that has two positions. Each position does a different thing. Let me explain. So let's talk about those two modes. The first mode is called accessory mode. On accessory mode, the car supplies power to the camera whenever the car is on. If the car is turned off, the power adapter will supply power to the camera for an additional 5 minutes or so, and then it shuts off entirely. So you can think about it this way. If the car is on, the camera is on. If the car is off, the camera is off. Now the second mode is called surveillance mode. On surveillance mode, the power adapter supplies power continuously to the camera. So the camera is always recording, and it will continue to record until the battery level gets too low and at that point when it gets too low the power adapter is going to cut off all power to avoid fully draining your battery and leaving you stranded that's a really cool feature about this power adapter that i like now before i explain when you should use surveillance mode and when you should use uh, accessory mode we gotta remember how dash cams work um, cameras that, like this one the dash cam record on a loop or rolling footage so this camera comes with an 8 gigabyte car and with that 8 gigabyte car, you can record one hour of footage. So if I'm curious about what happened two hours ago, mm, it's not gonna help me because that was already overwritten. I can only look one hour into the past. You could potentially upgrade the camera with a larger memory card, say the 64 gigabyte car, which is the maximum that this camera can take, and you will record about eight hours of footage, which is quite a bit, but you still got the same premise. It's an eight hours on the loop. If I'm curious about something that happened 10 hours ago, it's gone. I can only see eight hours into the past. So let's talk about a couple of scenarios and what mode you wanna use for each. If you're just looking to capture an event that happened when you were driving, and let's say it was a near miss accident, or it was an actual accident, or let's say that oddball meteor that passed by in front of your windshield, then the um, one hour of footage, a gigabyte card that's included with this, more than sufficient because you let the camera know that an event took place and the camera is going to save just that portion of the video and prevent that from being overwritten and you'll be able to capture plenty of stuff with that the other scenario that may happen is you might want to leave your car parked alone for several hours and you want to record what happened during those several hours for that mode you definitely want to upgrade to the larger memory car and you want to set the camera power adapter to surveillance mode so it can record those hours that you were away from the car. But again, up to eight hours. Yeah, and that might, you might be able, be able to stretch it overnight. I mean, if your stay is less than eight hours, then you did capture everything that happened when you were away from your car. The other modes or the other scenarios get a little trickier. Let's say you're leaving your car behind for service. And the service is going to take a couple days. Or let's say you're going to leave it behind at an airport. And you're going to be away from the car for several days. 
and it gets really tricky because if an event happened on day one and you come back to your car on day three, that is long gone. It was overwritten a long time ago. You're only going to be able to see what happened eight hours before you arrived at your car. So surveillance mode would not be good for several days. Now, here's my recommendation. I think you should use accessory mode for those cases. And here's why. And if you're going to leave your car behind for service, let's say at a valet, and the valet is going to have the car for several days, leave it on accessory mode because you want to record when the car is on. So if the valet decides to take it out for a spin, it's going to record that event. If uh, somebody at the service department turns the car on and you want to see how they're, what they're doing, how they're working on it, leave it on accessory mode. The, car, the camera is only going to record when the car is on. The scenario with the airport gets a little more tricky because on that scenario, nobody's going to be turning on your car or nobody should be turning on your car. So leaving it in a surveillance mode doesn't really work because like we said, it overwrites everything and leaving it in accessory mode doesn't work either because the car never turned on, so the camera never recorded. That's where there's a feature that comes in very handy. This particular camera has it, and I, and I know some other ones out there do. Uh, that is called parked mode. On park mode, the camera will record only when there's motion, obviously within range of the camera. When there's motion, it will record. When there is an impact, such as movement, it will record those events. So you could potentially have your camera and your car is parked at the airport for several days and it's going to capture the events just when those events happen. When somebody walked in front of your car, when somebody peeked into your car, if somebody bumped into your car, it's going to record all of those events and that's it. It's not going to record idle footage of nothing and you staring at being no, no action whatsoever. Now, unfortunately, for this particular camera, the park mode, uh, it is not enabled by default. You have to buy a special cable that hard, uh, you hardwire that into the car and that cable enables on the menu the ability to select park mode. Unfortunately, the OBD power adapter does not enable that mode. I wasn't able to get to it. So I think the Garmin cable probably has something specific that tells the camera, go ahead to use park mode. But that's an option out there if you're thinking about leaving your car behind for a long time. Well, that's it. That kind of covers the basics of dash cams, guys. Uh, if you're interested in this particular camera, the uh, Garmin 55, I do have a full review coming up where I go over every single one of the features, how to set it up, and everything in a lot more detail. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. There's a lot more like it, more Mustang videos. I got a lot more SRT videos, and there are DeLorean videos coming up, so bear with me. If you like Back to the Future, if you want to see the DeLorean, they are coming up. So, thanks again for watching, guys, and see you on the next one.